my name is Vijay Kuchro, and uh, I am from Harvard Medical School and, and the Broad Institute. And I'm going to talk about the allergic inflammation and intimate relationship between neurons and innate immune system. I often rush, seem to rush at the end. What I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you the people who really did the work. It was a close collaboration between three labs. Avi Regal's lab at the Broad Institute and uh, Sam Reisenfeld was the one who did the work. My lab, it was Antonia Walrap and Pat Burkett. And Ramnik Xavier at the Broad was Hepping Shu. There were lots of collaborators and there was uh, Leeway Lab and Raja from Leeway Lab from Isaac Chu's lab was at Pankaj Baral and David Ardis lab was Christoph Kellos and Tinel Melkchoff. This project actually started many years ago. I built a hypothesis because my son, who has many food allergies, as he was a kid growing up, if we feed him food and he gets allergic to it, we could control his allergies by giving antihistamines and EpiPens. But there was something that I noticed that if he started vomiting and it'll go into unrelenting vomiting and we couldn't control his vomiting, he will continue to throw up and we had to take him to children's hospital where he had to be sedated. I, based on this, I built a hypothesis that there must be an interaction between nervous system. Once nervous system nerves get activated, they must produce the neuropeptides that will activate the smooth muscles, but it will also maybe acting on the immune cells, especially innate immune cells which will produce cytokines, and these cytokines will activate the nerves. This may become a self-amplifying loop which need to be interrupted because of this self-amplifying loop that the nervous system is activating the immune system, and immune system in turn activates the neurons. So this raises a very important possibility that the neurons and innate lymphoid cells, which sit under the mucosae, uh, may form a circuit whereby neuropeptides uh, produced by the neurons will activate the innate lymphoid cells and cytokines produced by innate lymphoid cells in return activate neurons. This is what must be activating and this circuit needs to be interrupted. Let me give you a brief introduction about the innate lymphoid cells. Innate lymphoid cells are ones that sit under the mucosal surfaces like gut and lung and they communicate with both immune system, epithelial system and smooth muscles. There are three different types of innate lymphoid cells that have been produced and we described. Innate lymphoid cells one and two and three. In fact, innate lymphoid cells number two are essential uh, for inducing innate immune system. In, in, innate immu immune system, especially of allergic immune system. So innate lymphoid cell number two, or ILC2 for short, is the one that plays a critical role in inducing allergy asthma and atopy because of the cytokines this ILC2s produce. I have divided my talk in two parts. The very first part of the talk is on the identification of a neuropeptide receptor called NMUR1, which is expressed on innate lymphoid cells or ILC2s. And this is essential for upregulating and enhancing allergic responses. And it synergizes with cytokines like IL-25 and IL-33 to induce more allergies. And the second part of the talk is on an another neuropeptide called CGRP, which we think is essential for regulating uh, allergic inflammation. In fact, even it's essential for down-regulating uh, allergic responses. So let me go actually to the first part of the talk is I told you that innate lymphoid cells are located at mucosal surfaces such as lung and gut where they contribute to both tissue homeostasis and inflammation. ILC2s, which is shown here, is sitting under the mucosa. They normally produce cytokines like amphoregulin and they are essential for tissue homeostasis and tissue repair. But if there is an allergen, allergens, when they come in contact with epithelial surfaces, they will produce these cytokines called alarmins. And here are examples of two alarmins, IL-25 and IL-33. They will act on these ILC2s, which are normally homeostatic. They will convert them to highly pro-inflammatory and become inflammatory ILCs. And these ILC2s will produce cytokines like IL-5 and IL-13 and promote induction of inflammation. So there are uh, different types of innate lymphoid cells, as I suggested, that the innate lymphoid cells normally sit under the mucosal surfaces, epithelial surfaces in the gut and in the lung epithelium. And their major job is to really produce cytokines like amphoregulin to mediate homeostasis, 
but allergens activate epithelia to produce alarmins that will make these innate lymphoid cells from being homeostatic to pro-inflammatory. So we wanted to know at what happens to these innate lymphoid cells when they have been activated alarmins. So what we did was we took the innate lymphoid cells from the mouse, either from the lung or the gut, and we activated them in vitro in presence of the alarmins of our choice. We used two alarmins, and these are epithelially derived alarmins called IL-33 and IL-25. We activated these cells and then put them on plates or in the tubes and to undertake a technique called single cell RNA-seq, whereby we can identify the genome of each individual cell. And here is a map of each individual cell. We, in fact, did single cell RNA-seq for over 24,000 innate lymphoid cells. You can see that if you make a map of these 24,000 innate lymphoid cells, you can see the cells that are activated PBS, they uh, cluster together, and cells that are activated by IL-25, they cluster together, and then IL, the cells that are activated by IL-33, they cluster together. In fact, uh, they form about 11 different clusters with different transcriptional profiles. Then we looked deeply into these cells to identify what are the transcriptional elements are expressed on each of these, under each of these conditions. As you can see, this is a violin plot. And what we're doing here is that NMUR1 or the receptor for NMU, neuromidin U, is induced by IL-25 it is not induced as much by PBS, which is a control or IL-33 condition. It's a neuropeptide receptor. So we became interested in this gene. We thought that the condition that happens in allergic reactions, whether the neurons can produce when they get activated because of sensing allergens, they can produce a neuromidin U, and that together with alarmins will act on ILCs and in this case, ILC2s, and change their function. You can see, in fact, in this picture, is there is are these, all these green strands or neurons, and the red dots are the innate lymphoid cells, and you can see that the neurons and the innate lymphoid cells are intimately associating with each other, supporting the idea that the innate lymphoid cells are in close proximity to the neurons, they may be receiving signals for the neurons to get activated. And if you look at CD3 staining, these are your T cells. In fact, what we do see is that the neuromidin U, which is NMU, is generally produced in the lung in the dorsal root ganglia once they have been activated. So we wanted to see what does NMU do to innate lymphoid cells? Because here is a condition whereby the neuromidin U is produced by the neurons, and neuromidin U receptor is on innate lymphoid cells, especially that have been activated with IL-25. So what we did is we first did a series of experiments in vitro. We took innate lymphoid cells from either lung or the gut. We activated them with IL-25. We can see IL-25 can induce IL-5 and IL-13 from these innate lymphoid cells. And then if you add the neuropeptide with IL-25, you can see they act synergistically and there's a massive induction of both IL-5 and IL-13, two of the signature cytokines of IL-C2s, which are critical for inducing allergic reaction. On the left side of the graph, what you have is the qPCR analysis of IL-C2s treated with IL-25 with NMU. On the right side of the graph is the protein expression and you can see that both, it's not only the qPCR, but also the protein cytokines are induced by a synergistic activation of the alarmin IL-25 with NMU, inducing increased expression of these two cytokines. Then we used the same setup. We treated mice with either PBS, or we treated them with the neuropeptide NMU, or treated with IL-25 and alarmin together. We waited for three to four days, and in case of lung, we took the lung and took the brochial alveolar lavage and analyzed the expression of cytokines. 
These are the cytokines that induce allergies. We also analyzed the expression of eosinophils. Then we also did a droplet-based RNA-seq just to give you functional data, both in the lung and the bronchial alveolar lavage fluid. You can see that the, in fact, NMU alone has no effect in expression of any of these parameters, whereas expression of IL-5, IL-13, or eosinophil, it's almost like what you see with PBS. When you put in IL-25, there's a slight increase in both IL-5 and IL-13 in the lung. Same is true in the broker alveolar lavage fluid. But if you have IL-25 and NMU together in the lung, you can see there's both increase in IL-5 in the lung tissue, there's also in the proca-alveolar lavage fluid, there's a massive increase in the pro-allergenic cytokines. And you can see also it increases the induction of the eosinophils and both in terms of frequency, also in the number. So it looks like IL-25 seems to prime these innate lymphoid cells. And then together with the neuropeptide, you get a massive increase in the expression of both uh, cytokines that induce allergy and the eosinophils, which are the effector cells that promote induction of allergies. We also looked at the induction of allergic reaction in the lung. So what we did was in the animals, we gave them either IL-25 or IL-25 plus NMU. And you can see there's a synergistic response in the severity of lung inflammation when both IL-25 and NMU is together and there is uh, increase histologically you can see there is uh, this lymphoid follicles formed around bronchus and bronchioles and there is also increased emphysema but you can see there is also increased airway resistance if you give these mice this methylcholine and you can see that the in the control where you only give IL-25 there is not as much uh, airway resistance which is, uh, but if you give both IL-25 and NMU, there's an increased airway resistance. This is a surrogate uh, for an asthmatic attack in the mice. And you can see that two together will increase the uh, airway resistance. So the question then is that the, if you don't have NMU or if you block NMU or you have an antibody to neuromidin U neuropeptide whose receptors are present on the smooth muscles, and on innate lymphoid cells, what happens? And here's an experiment. We gave this house test mite extract to the mice and to either wild type and knockout mice. You can see that there are far fewer, significantly fewer innate lymphoid cells that are expanded in the lungs of the mice that do not express NMU. And they also have lower number of IL-5 and IL-13 producing IL-C2s. So if we had a soluble an antibody to specific for NMU, or we had a molecule, small molecule that could interfere with NMU or NMU receptor interaction, uh, we might imagine that in asthmatic attack or an allergic attack, we could block uh, the induction of allergic reaction by that antibody or a small molecular weight inhibitor. So what I told you is that allergens will activate, uh, induce alarms like IL-25 and IL-13 that will act on these innate lymphoid cells, inducing the expression of the receptor for neuropeptide NMUR1. NMU coming from the activated neurons will act on these innate lymphoid cells and induce massive inflammation and uh, mast cell degranulation and you can see that they, that way you get increased inflammation. So the neuropeptides must be enhancing the expression of the expression of inflammation. This is a bronchial large brushings of the patients with asthma. If you look at single cell RNA seq expression of these cells, and you can see NMU is upregulated in the bronchial brushings from severe asthmatic patients, suggesting that there's a crosstalk between the neurons and innate lymphoid cells in the process. Let me go to the second part of the talk, and this is again about CGRP. We had single cell data sets, and we wanted to know whether alarms will induce other neuropeptides. And in fact, we identified that innate lymphoid cells will upregulate an another neuropeptide receptor called RAMP1. In fact, RAMP1 with CalCRL will form a receptor for another neuropeptide 
called CGRP. In fact, if you look at the expression of RAM1 and CalCRL, you can see innate lymphoid cells 2 express both RAM1 and the ILC2s express also ILC2s. But there are not like neuro NMUR1, but the RAM1 is also expressed on CD4 T cells, gamma delta T cells, and CalCRL is also expressed on non lymphoid cells as well. And here is an expression of, you can look at this IL-33 receptor expressing ILCs express very high levels of CGRP. That means not only do they have receptor, and if you look at the UMAF of single cell data sets on the right side, you see using the, the CGRP GFP reporter mouse, and you can see the cells, the ILC2s not only have the receptor for CGRP, they can also make their own CGRP forming an autocrine growth loop or inhibitory loop. So here is the data uh, showing that the CGRP expressed by activated neurons can act on innate lymphoid cells and the, with CGRP receptor. But the question is, what's the consequence of this effect? This work was done in collaboration with Ramnik Xavier, and we took the innate lymphoid cells either from the normal lung or from the gut, from the pyrus patches or of the small intestine, of our submucosal surface of small intestine. We sorted these cells and gave them IL-33 with CGRP. And unlike NMU, what we immediately found is that the expression and co-incubation of IL-33 with CGRP uh, decreased the expression of IL-13, and it also inhibits the expression of IL-5. In the next slide, what you see is that if you have the same setup, that you take the innate lymphoid cells from the lung, or from the gut, and you give them CGRP with IL-33. Here we have uh, cells dividing normally under the conditions of media. These are the ILCs going through cell divisions using cell tracer violet. And then if you added CGRP, and CGRP both 100 picomolar and 100 nanomolar uh, will inhibit the cell division of ILCs. And when you do the RNA-seq analysis, on the left side, you have the IL-33 uh, activated ILCs, have all the pro-inflammatory phenotype. And, but when you add in CGRP, uh, they develop this regulatory phenotype with FOXP3, NF-IL-3 in there, the CD39, the PD-1, FGL2. These are all the molecules that we find on regulatory T cells or exhausted T cells, it looks like the CGRP may be bringing out this regulatory-like phenotype on the innate lymphoid cells or ILC2s, and you can really see them here. The question now is, what does it biologically do? I'm going to give you two sets of experiments where we have given either PBS or CGRP, IL-33 is the alarming, or IL-33 with CGRP, and then we looked at both the lung and at the gut. We looked at the lung tissue and bronchiolar lavage fluid, look at the cytokines and eosinophils, and you can immediately see that if you look at the number of innate lymphoid cells or ILC2s, the PBS and CGRP alone doesn't do much. IL-33 increases the expression of uh, the ILC2s. It also increases the number of ILC2s. It increases the frequency of proliferating ILC2s as you can see with the KI-67, but when you add in this neuropeptide CGRP, you can inhibit both the numbers and the frequency and the activation of the ILC2s. And if you look at now cytokines, and then you can see that PBS and CGRP does not induce IL-5, IL-13s, or eosinophils, but IL-33 will increase the expression of IL-5, IL-13, and number of eosinophils in the lung, and CGRP will completely inhibit the induction of these inflammatory and pro-allergenic cytokines, IL-5, IL-13, and will de completely decrease expression of eosinophils in the lung. And here is the data. If you look at the lung severity score, and you can see histology on the left, IL-33 induces massive lymphoid infiltration in the lung, and you can see is pretty bronchial, and in the severity score, they have got very severe inflammation in the lung, which is uh, allergic inflammation, and CGRP inhibits it. If you do the same assay as I showed you before of the airway resistance, 
and you can see that compared to the black lines that the which is uh, IL-33 induces massive induction of airway resistance in fact CGRP inhibits it next few slides are done with uh, Ramnik Xavier and his lab we are looking at the cellular composition during allergic reactions in the gut we took the harvested after giving after sensitizing the mice with chicken oval albumin in alum from day 0 and day 14 and then gave intragastrically or orally the OVA 28 and day 36 and then harvest the pears patches and lamina propria and you can immediately see the cells that get expanded are the NK cells, ILC2s and mast cells in the gut and there's a little decrease in the uh, DC populations in the gut. Now we are looking for what does CGRP do. And here is a setup. We can sensitize the mouse, give them IL-25 or IL-33 plus with CGRP. You can see on the right as you're looking at immunohistochemistry that you can see KLRG positive cells infiltrate massively in IL-25 condition. But then when you give CGRP with IL-25, shown in the graph here, there's a significant increase in the ILC2s in the gut. And uh, when you give IL-25, but with CGRP, there's an inhibition. On the lower uh, graph, we have induced allergic reaction. And then we sensitize the mice on day 0, day 14. And then we challenge these mice with the OYS allergen. And with, C, with or without CGRP, on the right side of the graph, what you see is that the OVA induces massive ILC2 expansion, and it also induces mast cell infiltration, but OVA with CGRP will induce inhibition of both ILC2s and also mast cell infiltration. So what we have is that the neuropeptides produced by activation of neurons can have two different functions. Then the first part of the talk, I talked about the allergens inducing IL-25 that activate induction of NMU with neuromedin 1 receptor will activate the induction of IL-5 and IL-13 and promote induction of allergies and uh, both in lung and also the food allergies. But we have another neuropeptide and peptide receptor, which is induced by IL-33 and the CGRP together uh, with CGRP receptor will in fact downregulate all this allergic reaction and bring the whole process of allergic reaction to homeostasis. And we think this is a dynamic process where the different types of neurons may be participating and may provide a new target by which to control allergic inflammation. Just to summarize, what I told you is that this doing single cell RNA-seq, we identified neuromedin U receptor 1 on innate lymphoid cells, which are the innate cells that promote allergies. IL-25 primarily acts as a homeostatic signal for these uh, in innate lymphoid cells, but neuropeptide NMU synergizes with IL-25 to induce proinformity ILC2s. And in fact, we showed you that the NMU and IL-25 induces massive allergic reaction. We showed this in the lung, but there were two papers back-to-back uh, -back with our paper from in Nature showing that this is true also in the lung and the gut. And the second part of the talk, I showed you that CGRP, which is a neuropeptide, which acts on a neuropeptide receptor, ramp and CalCRL, it's negatively regulating innate lymphoid cell proliferation and effector function, and I showed you data that IL-33 and CGRP actually induces a regulatory module. It looks almost like a regulatory T cell or exhausted T cell with expression of FOXP3, uh, expression of uh, co-inhibitory molecule like PD-1 and CD39 and production of FGL2, the suppressive cytokine. We believe the CGRP is in alarming induced airways will inhibit uh, both allergic reaction in the airway and the gut, uh, which is independent of adaptive immune system. And this is my last slide. This is my lab. A lot of people contributed to this work as I went through, and I'm particularly grateful to the Aviv Regal and her lab and Sam Reisenfeld, especially uh, from Aviv's lab, 
And from my lab, it was Pat Burkett, Antonia Walrap who did the work. And from Gromnik Xavier, Xavier's lab, it was Hepping Shu who did the work. I thank you for your attention.